quickly in the morning light, the women went to Jesus' tomb. The tomb was empty, the stone rolled away. For God's love is stronger than death itself. Let us join our voices with Mary Magdalene. We, we have, have seen the Lord. Lord. Easter people, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. indeed. Let us worship God. Our first hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Please be seated. <clears throat> Friends, who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. And Christ prays for us. Anyone in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone and a new life has begun. Friends, know that we are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Please be seated. Have a special anthem this morning, Lift High the Cross. <clears throat> Thank you. 
she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know what they have, where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them, these things that he had said to her. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. I have seen the Lord. I thought it was the gardener, but it was the Lord. And I can imagine Mary's brain trying to catch up with and sort out all the details of what she already knew in her heart. Describing the angels. Were they angels? The stone rolled away. Did Jesus do that all by himself? The wrappings of linen, the one rolled up, trying to sort out those details, but knowing, knowing that she has seen the Lord. And then there's the beloved disciple and Peter, and the disciple whom Jesus loved saw all these things, the rock, the linens, the empty tomb, and scripture says that he believed, though he didn't understand that Jesus had to rise again. He doesn't know what's happened, but he believes. And then Peter, just there, taking it all in and traveling back home. We don't hear anything about what Peter believes, not yet. But Peter's path is complicated because of his own guilt and heartbreak at having denied Jesus three times. His chance to reconcile those things is coming, though, and he, too, will believe the unbelievable. Believing the unbelievable. That's really what Easter is all about. Because each and every disciple is called to believe the unbelievable. From those very first disciples, all the way down through history, even to you and me. But it must have been even harder for these disciples. They watched the terrible events of Good Friday. They laid Jesus in the 
the tomb. They know beyond knowing that he is dead. And their minds were surely trying to catch up with these events. How could the terrible events of Friday happen? I knew he was the Messiah. But how could these horrible things happen to the Messiah? Thinking they had been wrong in what they knew, what their bodies and souls knew to be true. And here, Easter morning comes, and the morning events tell them they weren't wrong after all. But for these who were living through these days, it must have felt like spiritual and emotional whiplash. But the amazing thing about Easter morning is they weren't wrong. Not only did they know that Jesus is the Messiah, but wonder of wonders, he's alive again. He's alive, and he has conquered death for us all. The one who called me by name, the one who loved me, despite all the rest, all the problems in my life, the one who did all these things, he's here, and he's calling us by name again, and he's alive. And that's why we're here. That's why we mark this day together. Serene Jones said it so well when she said, we don't go to church simply to remind our conscious minds that God lives and that we're called to follow Christ. We need to show up so that our bodies can be reminded of him too. And so the unconscious recesses of our psyches can be moved anew. Our dispositions toward grace rejuvenated. Our anxieties quell as the world shifts once again back into place. And Easter comes and comes and comes again. And after the year we've had, that is more true even than any time before. Jones goes on to say, it is in this shared space that we are encountering this morning that Jesus meets us, calls us by name, receiving our touch, calming our anxious worries, and reminding us again and again that grace is not an object to receive, but it is a gift to be lived. It is a gift to be lived. Christ is risen. I don't know how to explain that rationally, but I know the way it sounded when he called my name. I know in a way past knowing that he lives, that he's at work in the world, and that we can be a part of it. And after a long, hard year of being a part, after a long, hard year of pushing through the fear to continue serving our neighbors, distributing food, giving meals on wheels, so many ways you have continued in that work. After a year of serving neighbors through the fear and anxiety, through the loss and grief, we can gather today with joy. Let us all go from this place encouraged by this great good news and not only go but do as mary did go and tell go and tell go and tell of the joy that we find in the events of this day go and go in the joy taking it into your very soul as we gather in this place today now to him who is able to do far more than all we could ask or imagine. To God be the glory of the church and in Christ Jesus, both now and forevermore. Amen. Our second hymn, Thine is the Glory.
offerings. If you have offerings this morning that you would like to give, please drop them in the offering plate as you leave the sanctuary today. And if you're worshiping from home and have offerings to share, please drop those in the mail to the church office. Friends, let us truly be true, cheerful givers. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at table in the kingdom of heaven, just as we have come from north and west and east and south to be here this day. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was with his disciples, they took a walk to Emmaus. As the disciples walked along the road with Jesus, their eyes were kept from recognizing him. But as they walked, he opened the scriptures to them, and their very hearts burned within them. When they came to the end of their journey, they invited him to stay and share the meal. 
He came in, and while at table, he took the bread, and he blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them, and then their eyes were opened, and he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Friends, this is indeed the central act of our faith, the communion of our saving Lord. Friends, let us call ourselves together using the call to prayer as printed in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for you have created us and set us in this beautiful world that we might enjoy your creation and live in full communion with you. But your people were faithless and broke your laws. You sent the prophets to call us back to your ways. Through the centuries, your prophets called. But in the fullness of time, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, fully human, fully divine, that he might redeem, that he might reconcile us to you. We thank you, and we lift our voices with the angels who forever sing in your presence. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would pour your Holy Spirit out upon us, upon these gifts, the bread and the cup, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may truly be the communion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that as we share this meal, we are made one with you again. We are made one with each other and made one with all of your followers across the globe. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for this meal, for this day, for this great good news. And we ask that you would bless us as we pray together as Christ called us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We know from Scripture that on the night in which Christ was betrayed, he took the bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Drink all of you of it. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim Christ's saving death until he comes again. You tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. The elders will come forward and bring first the bread and then the cup and serve you as they come around. Friends, these are indeed the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for your presence with us this day. We thank you for your sustaining presence with us throughout this entire year as we have longed to share this meal together. We understand your longing that you have to share this meal with your disciples. Gracious Lord, as you have been with us through times of struggle, now be with us in time of joy. Fill our souls with your presence and send us out in great joy to love and serve your people. These things we ask in the name of Christ. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Friends, we know from Scripture that after supper, they sang a hymn and went out. Our final hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks.
Hallelujah.